Okay, so today we're going to create this handrail column. All right, we're going to do this in a couple different videos. We're going to make videos for each of the different pieces. Um, so first we're going to start with part number two, because that's the order that I asked the students to start with. Two is a little bit simpler, so I want to start with two because it gives you a lot of the techniques to create part number one. So first thing I'm going to do, as always, is select my working directory, navigate to wherever I want to save, create a nice folder by just right-clicking, new folder. And I'm going to call it MS1006. And then I'm going to hit OK. It goes into the folder, and I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit New. And we're going to title this part MS1006-02, because that's what I asked the students do. So we're going to hit OK, and that's going to bring us into my part. And now what I can do before I start is, as you may have noticed when I briefly showed this, this is a metric assembly. We're going to model it in metric as well. So I'm going to drag that over. I'm going to change this to a metric part by going File, Prepare, Model Properties. And then I'm going to change my units right here and go to millimeter kilogram second and hit set. And then since I haven't created anything, it doesn't matter which one I pick, but if I want, had created something and I had maybe created something with the metric numbers, but I was an inch, I could say interpret. If I had created something in inch and wanted to convert it to metric, I could hit convert. It doesn't matter either way because we haven't created anything. So I'm gonna hit okay and then close and then close. All right, so now I can start to create this part. So I'm going to go Extrude. I'm going to hold right click and go to Define Internal Sketch. And I'm going to sketch on the front plane. So I'm going to pick that front plane, right, right, good. I'm going to hit Sketch. And then if yours doesn't rotate, just hit this little button right here. You can see it'll rotate automatically. All right, now if I look at this part, and I'll do a little reverse engineering, we can see that this part is based on a circle right here. This whole clamp works by clamping on the center of the circle. Okay, so that's what I should create first, is I should base everything off that center, because that's where everything's going to be dimensioned to, if I dimension this properly. So I'm going to create a circle. I'm going to pick the center. I'm going to draw it out like that. And I'm going to click, and then I'll middle click to get out of it. Then I'm going to put a dimension in, because I'm going to resize my whole thing with this. So I'm going to pick just the arc once, and then middle click. That gives me a radius. My radius was 30. Now I can refit it. And now I'm more on the scale than I would want to be. So then from there, I can create the remainder of the part. So we have a smaller circle on the inside. We have another circle. Ooh, let's create the line first. We have a line that comes down inside the, the radius. Notice it's away from that because in order for it to clamp properly, there has to be a gap. And then I can put a circle on the bottom here because there's a little round circle there. Then I can take a line. I can go from here. I can go over and click. And I can go straight up and connect it to my circle. And hidden inside here is my actual shape. So I'm going to go delete segment right up here. I'm going to get rid of these two. I'm going to zoom in, get rid of that arc, that arc, that one. Looks pretty good. Get rid of this arc of this circle and this line right here. And actually, I'm noticing I forgot to connect up here. So I'm going to create a line from here to here. I'll just middle click a couple times, get out of it. And there's my shape. That's exactly what my clamp looks like. So now I'll put some dimensions in. We have this is two, the radius of my little circle down here. Then we have a dimension from here to here of 19. Then we have a dimension from the bottom to the center of 52. And we have one more dimension. They don't give me the radius, but if I look at the other part, it gives me a dimension from the top of the clamp to that center point of 42, which is a weird way to dimension it, but we're going to go with it. We may change it down the road when we make our drawing. So I'll put that in, make it 42, and we can see that radius gets a little bit bigger. Okay, now let me just verify something because it didn't ask me for a certain dimension. Let's go from here to here. 
put that in. That dimension is 2, which is good. I think what I actually could do is I should probably, that's okay, I should probably get rid of this. And that should allow me, so I really need that dimension. I wonder why that is. That's not letting me put that in. Maybe it's this, orth yeah, that's probably what it is. So let's delete that orthogonal dimension. And now I've got my two. And if I modify this, I can push it in and out, which is good. All right, so that's good. So now, and if I want to change this down the road, I can just go and hit dimension, pick the radius, and that's what that radius actually is. But you see, it's not a very nice number. So we'll stick with this for now. When we lay it out on the drawing, it may make more sense to put that radius in, or at least a thickness. I'm surprised that it's not at least that. No, it's not nice either. Okay. So we're going to hit the checkbox. And then in order to keep my datum planes in the center, I'm going to go to symmetric. And the thickness of this piece is 42, 42 millimeters. So we're going to hit the checkbox. There's my 42 millimeter clamp. Now I can create some holes. I'm going to create one hole. I'm going to actually separate these spot faces, by the way. So we have a spot face and we have a clearance hole right here. Because if we reverse engineer this, we realize this bolt passes through two clearance holes. And then the clamping is done by the nut and the lock nut. Okay, so. My clearance hole is 12 and a half, as you can see right here, because that would allow an M12 screw to go through. So I'm going to pick this surface. I'm going to drag my references to this side over here, which is 21. I'm going to drag this one to the center, which is this datum plane right here. I'm going to make that one 32. And then I'm going to make my hole go through. And I'm going to change it to 12 and a half. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to hit my checkbox. Now, to make the spot face, I'm going to go hole. I'm going to make it coaxial. I'm going to pick the axis, then hold control, pick the surface. But you notice it goes the wrong way. So I'm going to go to placement, go super fancy, and hit flap, or flip, or flap, flip. Goes back the other way. And we're going to change the spot face to 30. We can see it cuts in there. And then I'm going to say it goes all the way through, just like this. Now I can hit the checkbox, and I've got my spot face in there. Now all I have left are my rounds, which are all radius of 2. But the important thing to notice is with a clamp, you usually want this to be like a sharp edge right here, so that it sits nice and flat. Um, but the rounds go all the way around pretty much everywhere else, except for the sharp corners there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up my round so I don't have to put as many in. So I'm going to go round, change it to 2, and I'm going to pick here, hold control, very important, hold control, click here so it all goes under the same set. I'm going to hold control, pick this edge, and I'm going to hold control, and pick this one. And what that's going to do is my next rounds, if I pick any of these edges, it's going to transition all the way around up to that point. So I'll hit the checkbox. Then I'll put another round in. Now I can pick here. See how it goes all the way around like that. And I can hold control, pick here, and it does the same thing. Now I can hit my checkbox again. And I have completed this part. So I'm going to go up and save it. I'm going to hit OK. And part number two is done for our claim.